We are so excited to be here on the 80th floor of the world's most famous building, the Empire State Building, and thrilled to spend some time with you guys and Cindy Lauper. And where do we begin with Cindy Lauper? I mean, she is a Grammy, I had to write all these notes down. She's a Grammy winner, Emmy winner, Tony Award winner, songwriter, and uh, she, she, of course, has sold many albums, like 50 million albums globally. Her iconic voice, influential punk glamour, and infectious live shows have uh, really just propelled her to stardom. Uh, she won the Grammy Award for Best New Artist with her first ever album, She's So Unusual, one of the first CDs I ever purchased, by the way. <laughs> Clap it up for She's So Unusual. And she became the first woman in history to have four top five singles from a debut album, including her anthem, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Perhaps you've heard that one. <laughs> now sing it. No, I won't do that. She's also released 10 additional studio albums featuring classics like Time After Time. Perhaps you've heard that one too. True Colors. And is a song, she's also a songwriter, Hall of Fame inductee, and New York Times bestselling author. But wait, Christine, there's more. Wait, there's more, yes. There's so much more. In 2013, Cindy became the first solo women, woman to win Best Original Score, that's music and lyrics, for Kinky Boots on Broadway. Yeah, Kinky Boots. She is also tireless in her advocacy work, always fighting for the underdog, especially women, people living with HIV, AIDS, and the LGBTQ community. Her commitment runs so deep, she co-founded True Colors United in 2008 to bring an end to homelessness amongst LGBTQ youth. In the fall of 2022, in response to the overturning of Roe versus Wade, she launched the Girls Just Want to Have Fundamental Rights Fund, which was formed to financially support women's yeah. issues in an inclusive way. She truly, truly is amazing. Let's give a big iHeart Radio welcome for the one and only Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Cindy, it's so good to have you here, and uh, what a day uh, celebrating this monumental, mo monumental moment here at the Empire State Building. How, how do you yeah, feel? I mean, right? crazy. Right? Yellow. It's a power chakra. Yellow. Color. Right, right. <laughs> it is. It's the color of the power chakra for everybody. And, and it's also, you know, for canaries, for let the canaries sing. And I just want to let you know, all you dragon fans... That size is in everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have a lot to talk about, Cindy. First of all, you recently announced that uh, you're going on your first major tour in over a decade. And it's your farewell tour at Madison Square Garden. What can fans expect? No it's closure. Like, it's, it's kind of sad. Plane, trains, and automobiles. I'm done after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're keeping it real. All right. Well, you know, listen. It's the first arena tour I've done since the 80s, so I'm excited. And I'm strong right now. So, you know, we're gonna wait for another. I, I figure now is the time, and I wanted to celebrate and thank everybody for all the support all these years. And I look at it as we're gonna have some fun and a celebration, and that's what I want to do. I want to celebrate with everybody, and you know, if this is this is going to be the last big tour, I mean, yeah, I might play here or there, or the theater, that's different. But this this will be a big celebration, and I I just want to say thank you to everybody, not just in North America, but you know, I'm going to travel the whole world. That's what I mean about farewell. <laughs> well, it's hard, you know, and you do get on planes, trains, and automobiles, and after a while, you know, plus I'm not good at parallel parking, so let's face it, not everybody has those, you know, parking lots where you could just drive in. Right, right. You need those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we saw so much of that in your beautiful connection with your audience uh, through your documentary, which was... 
Absolutely wonderful. Let the Canaries sing. It's, uh, it's on Paramount Plus right now. Yep. It really is incredible, and I wonder how the experience was for you and why you decided now was the time for a documentary. It's, it's great. Oh, thank you. It, it's, I mean, it's about me, but it's not my film. It's, uh, the director is Allison Elwood. And, you know, during the pandemic, just like everybody else, I was sitting watching documentaries, you know, like all of us, and um, everybody's like, you gotta do a documentary. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not dead, so I'm not. <laughs> and then they said, if, you, if you're alive, then you can correct it if it's wrong, you know. And uh, I saw this one called Laurel Canyon. And I, right, and that was really good, right? And it was a film, you know, and a lot of times when people do stories about famous people, first of all, I thought everybody knew everything about me anyway. It's not like I keep a lot of secrets, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it was very moving and it was film-like and instead of being like a little TV thing, it was a, a real film. And the fact that she, um, she's a wonderful editor and, you know, she decided to let it be called Let the Canaries Sing. I don't know that I would have done that, but who wants to do a documentary about yourself? So it's, it's hers. It's just about me. And, um, you know, I got to watch all these people I love say, you know, basically nice things, you know. I was all like, wow. <laughs> you know, um, but... I did it because I figure you got to share your story, right? And I got to say, when Twitter first started and all of that, I was doing a day in a life for other artists. You know, I thought this was like an artist, um, you know, like a journal. Mm -hmm. And until my friend called me up and said, Did, why don't you say you were just at a place instead of you're going to a place? <laughs> Then I realize it's really not that. Right. And so sharing my story might inspire someone else who goes through the same thing. And it's kind of like in the 70s, that's when I was a kid, <laughs> um, there, was, there was a thing called women's consciousness raising groups. And women would get together and they would share their stories. I mean, I think it's got to go beyond that. It's got to be all of us getting together, sharing your stories. Because if, if you're sharing your stories with older people, younger people, you get to learn. So when you get to that crossroads, you could think, oh, oh, I, I remember that one, that story. Yeah, maybe I don't have to go down that road. I could just sidetrack that, you know? And that's why you want to share your stories. Yeah, that's great. I want to go back. We touched on this at the very beginning of the interview. But right. for you people that don't know, um, the lovely audience here, about a half hour ago, there was a very, very special ceremony. And the Empire State Building is, go is going to be lit in your honor. And Did you ever? I mean, <laughs> as oh. a lifelong New Yorker, how does this make you feel? It's unbelievable, right? <laughs> it's just, I, I was <laughs> like, really? Who'd you talk to? You know, because honestly, I've been looking at the Empire State Building all my life. In fact, when I used to live downtown, I had an apartment that faced the Empire State Building, right, and the Chrysler Building. But it was always the Empire State Building. I'd always say, well, it's right where I left it. Great to be back, <laughs> you know. And, and I just felt like, oh my God, right? I felt a little like Fay Ray. Yes. <laughs> you know. But I, I, I think it's wild. And I've been looking at it forever. But I'm glad that it's going to be yellow. Because yellow would empower everybody. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This will be Thursday night, I believe, right? Thursday night. So we're all going to have our eyes on the oh Empire State Building Thursday night. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to travel to go see it. I know this is like an incredible moment, but uh, one of your most memorable moments, your career is, is just so amazing. I don't know how you choose one moment, but 
we're being asked to ask you, what is your most memorable moment in your career? Oh, in my career? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've been lucky, because I've had a lot of them. Um, well, I think, honestly, when I got to dance down Gay Street, when I got to do Girls with all my friends. And that was your first video too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. All my friends. Right. I think when I did We Are The World, that was surreal. Mm -hmm. I think when I did The Wall, and let me tell you, it wasn't like he, you know, I had to sing unison with Roger Waters, but he got to stand still and I had to run the football field from one side of the stage, which was 50 feet to the other. I mean, I did it. Right. You know. We were but. talking about I Drove All Night. Remember that tune, I Drove All Night, one of my favorites? Of course, you remember that. You remember that, right? I Drove All Night? <laughs> that was one of the first times, what, you drove a car and you had your barefoot? I remember that, too. That was my first co-direction of a video. And I wanted to combine art and music, and w one of the producers kept telling me, listen, listen, you gotta, you gotta do this thing like James Bond, you know, and, and put film on your body. And so I did, and uh, <laughs> I didn't get in as much trouble for that as I did for Shebop, I mean. Well, yeah. <laughs> that really, but then my mother really didn't know. Right. Yeah. I didn't know either. On back on back uh, in the day on the radio, I didn't know. know. You're not. You weren't supposed to know. Well, yeah. It was supposed to be one of those songs that a grown up could listen and laugh, and a kid wouldn't know. Why should a kid know? And that's why I never mentioned anything like hands or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Everything was like very, um, you know, COVID. Like very, you know. Yeah. Like. Stealth. <laughs> How about the uh, the Goonies? Because you've got oh, a lot of fans God. of, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! You know, I've had a million moments. I was at the garden with Wendy Richter when she won, and I was the manager. So don't try me, because I did learn a few moves from them, you know. <laughs> but um, and Captain Lou. Oh my yeah. God! In the video for Girls Is When I Fun, he was in a few. Was he a couple my videos? My mom was in it, and my, of course, she but but was. Uh, a lot of my aunts, Aunt Gracie, Aunt Helen, Aunt May, my mother, right. Captain Lou, yeah, it was a lot. They didn't know. Right. But <laughs> Did you enjoy making videos, or were they more like, oh, I gotta do a video? No. It, no, our, you, you didn't, or no, you didn't? Our videos were, were fun, and I wanted our videos to have a lot of color, and they were, they became like our gang, because you expected to see similar people mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and, and my mom, my mom was in it as much as, uh, as she could. And at one time I, I wanted her to, you know, do acting because there was something about her on film that was so vulnerable. And then she told me she was only doing it because she wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> you know, and then I That's felt cute. bad, right? That's awesome. Because every Halloween, you know, when I first went away on Halloween, there were all, she missed me, and there were all these little girls coming to her door dressed up as me, so it was very <laughs> surreal for her. You know, I, I'm, I'm very lucky. Who was the biggest influence in your career? Who? Yeah, the, yeah. like who'd you grow up listening to and you like? Oh, who? Oh my God. You know, I used to, um, when I first started singing, I was singing La Belle. I was singing Lady Marmalade. So when I got to sing with Patty LaBelle on her Thanksgiving show, that was wild because that was the voice. And then when I heard her sing time after time, I felt like, that's it, drop the mic, I'm good. <laughs> you know, because she... You wrote that song. Well, I, I co-wrote it with Rob Hyman. Right. And... and um. And when Miles David played it, Miles Davis was um, one of the great, great jazz <coughs> players. I mean, could you imagine? Yeah. You know, because I went to jazz school, but I got 
Axe to leave because I wouldn't leave my rock band. Axed, axed to leave. That's your Ozone Park coming right, up. Right, right. Axed, axed, axed to leave. Asked. <laughs> you know, that's what one of my agents told me in the 90s. She said, Cindy, you don't ax someone. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you do. But. <laughs> All right, so advice for someone who is inspired by you, wants to be a singer, performer, an artist, what, what would you offer? Okay. I would offer like every other thing in life, even like marriage. You know, some people are like, oh, how come you married so long? How, oh, that's a miracle. No, it's because you stay married. And if you're a singer, you stay a singer. You know, a singer is always a singer. And singers are born on this planet to basically heal people. Because when you listen to a voice, it takes you to a magical place. And when you're singing, never forget that magical place. And you don't give up. You don't give up on anything, and you don't give up on yourself. And I would say, it's like being in line. And the guy in the front is either going to go through the door, or he's going to fall away, and then you're next. Maybe you got 10 more people in front of you. I read an article one time, um, uh, The Almonds in Rolling Stone. That's a famous article, because that was written by... Uh, the almost famous guy. Oh, right? yeah. Right? Um, so, we'll Dwayne Who is that? Who is that? I know that. that that's um, Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Crowe. Crow. Oh, thank gosh. you. Yes. We'll put her on the spot here. Uh, Cameron Crowe. Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah, see what happens if you eat too much sugar. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he said, Dwayne Orman said in the interview, if you could just give yourself a good 10 years, but sometimes... You're just going to be a late bloomer. And I, I had another friend. And, I mean, that inspired me because as each year was going by and nothing was happening, I just kept thinking, eh, what year is this? You know, you just, you don't give up. You don't give up on yourself. You don't give up on your health. You don't give up on the people you love. You just have to keep persevering. And you know what? You get through. And when you get to those crossroads, you try and figure out, well, what's the best step I can take? And you know, you're not gonna be a saint. Trust me, I know that, <laughs> but. she bought video. Well, more than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, can, you know, because uh, everybody has the possibility of being a dirty rat bastard sometimes. Right, right. But you wanna try and <laughs> You want to try and, um, you know, take a few steps back. Always try and look and see what you did and what you can do. And know that you can always do something good. You, you know, know, speaking of doing something good, Christine and I were prepping for the interview. We were talking about, off, kind of off mic, how great you are with giving to charities. Mm -hmm. And you find the time to, to really, really help these worthwhile charities. Um, uh, how do you have time to do all this. You really do a lot. Well, it, yeah, I know. I, 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 I know at the end of the day it makes you feel separating good. separating everything. You know, I just do it when I can and try and schedule it. That's really my manager. She, she loves schedules and she <laughs> schedules. You know, but you need that kind of thing, you know. Please, when I come off tour, I'm always looking for the day sheet. I'm like, okay, what am I doing today? Oh my gosh, I have no day sheet. You know, it's, it's all about the day sheet. It is. What do you do when you have a day off? Do you? Uh, it seems like you're just incredibly busy uh -huh. all the time. Sometimes I just lay down. I love it. And sleep all day, like sloth. <laughs> and then, then I feel guilty. But my favorite things are going for walks with my husband or you know, going to museums. We live in a great city, and you got so many great museums here and so many great people and things to see and food to taste and 
gosh, there's always a good parade, right? <laughs> always, yeah, it definitely yeah, yeah. is. All right, so um, I guess we have to wrap up. We love talking to you. Are there any last words that you'd like to share with us for this interview? Well, come to my tour and help me celebrate. <laughs> In the documentary, Let the Canary Sing. On Paramount. The Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus. I know, yeah. yeah the, I, know. Pa, 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 pa. I know. Paramount but Plus. Thank, and thanks for coming. And did you ever? I never thought in my life I would ever be at the Empire State Building and have it lit for me. I got a friend here that I grew up with, Anthony Stremo. Anthony. And he lived next door from me. Did you ever think that would happen? I never <laughs> thought, right? Well, all eyes on the Empire State Building Thursday night. Thursday night, we're going to be watching and singing Girls Just Want to Have Fun when the whole thing turns yellow. Congratulations. Thank you. Cindy Lauper, everybody. Thank you so much. 106.7 FM.